environment design is one of the greatest parts of visual storytelling. This key detail tells us everything about the setting, culture, and circumstances of the world around you, from the works of Tolkien to those of Miyazaki and Tetsuya Nomura. In today's video, I'm showing you how I created an enchanted environment from a world-building project that I resurrected from over 15 years ago, its lore, design, and dangers. Welcome back to Animus, and today we enter the coastal world of Moena and Aquas. Moena and Aquas, or the City on the Water, exists by the westernmost coast of a supercontinent interconnected with two neighboring realms, of Contra de Shad, known for its void-based magic, and Verde Bukekayo, known by its earth-based magic. The earliest inhabitants of the region were Novo and Cast, both belonging to their own unique tribes, specifically those of the Wystotians, or the Novo, and the Nascadians, or the Cast. This dates us early back to the fall of the demigods, and for those of you watching who are unfamiliar with the races of my world, I recommend checking out this playlist right here where I discuss the races in detail, their many attributes and features. Novo in this region would adopt special features for the monsters in their habitat, and because of such, this would influence things like their appearance and culture based on the morphologies that they would adopt. It should also be noted that when not in their transformation state, on a superficial level, many Novo were virtually indistinguishable from their cousin tribes, men and castes. Despite this, they still upheld their unique cultural tendencies and practices. Predating the arrival of human tribes in the region, of the earliest spirits and monsters to inhabit the land, Leviathan existed as something in between, as a powerful, primordial entity. With its ability to provide things like water and sway the weather, people would eventually come to venerate the entity in favor of trying to gain its wisdom and its blessings. This entity, specifically known as an elemental, would reveal its greatest source of power, an ancient artifact protected known as the water core. Think of the water core as a type of energy source that has both physical and metaphysical properties. It serves as the singular most powerful source of water magic in the world. It should also be noted that the literal landscape of Moena and Aquas is influenced by this water core. If you take a look at things like the mountainsides and the just overall shape of the geography, it really has this kind of wave-like fluidity to it that is because of the presence of this artifact here. Everything from how the elementa, which are the building blocks of magic in my universe, move throughout the atmosphere, have this influence on shaping it as well too. I wanted the visuals to reflect that in the concept art. As this region would grow, it would open up trade routes with neighboring lands such as Contra de Shad or Verde Pukekayo, respectively connected through sea routes and other geographic ones. In this next section, I want to do a deep dive into monster design. Before I jump in, for those of you who are interested in previous designs for my world building project and all of its kind of interconnected regions, take a look at this playlist that I made. I've got a lot of cool concept art videos where I talk about the lore and the biology of some of the creatures that exist within my world. The high presence of water elementa, the building blocks required for creating water magic, has influenced the natural ecology of the land. In one such way, through the evolution of animal species in the region, and how they interact with magic specifically. Starting out with a plant-based monster known as a moby shrub. Moby shrub are small, photosynthesizing creatures that mostly mind their own business as they traverse the plains, forests, and cliff sides of the realm. They stand about two to three feet in height, wearing a natural mossy coat that's hydrophobic or water repelling. Their life cycle begins when they're birthed from brooding pods upon reaching their adolescence. At this stage, they'll congregate in communities, sticking together for the earliest parts of their life. Upon maturing, they'll take on a more solitary approach to their living. Moby shrub, as a monster species, are relatively docile. However, they will employ defensive techniques if they feel threatened, such as paralyzing spores and a different variety of elemental magic, most commonly earth and wind-based. Their tiny, bird-like feet also double as roots, which, when ingrained, will absorb nutrients from the soil. As mentioned earlier, these small plant-based monsters utilize photosynthesis to feed as well as to sunbathe. When doing so, they'll tend to ruffle their leaps about and they'll start making a whistling tune, 
kind of doing a bit of a happy dance to express gratitude for the nutrients that they're absorbing. Of the many other monsters in the region, Argajun, specifically Greater Argajun, serve as one of the apex predators of the coastal scape. Argajun are one of the animals that I like to call reptomammals of the many species that inhabit my world. Like the name suggests, these creatures exhibit traits that are found in both mammals as well as reptiles, but more specifically, Argajun also carry some avian-like features through the presence of their feathered bodies and large wings. With these features, these entities are able of performing short stints of flight to scale the landscape or to chase down prey. Argajun are highly aggressive and very territorial, in stark contrast to the neighboring Moby shrubs. In addition to their physical prowess, Argajun are natural masters of magic. So skillful that even the rare variants like the Greater Void Argajun can utilize complex techniques like summons and meteor spells in combat. Argajun also come in a variety of regional-based variants, the common Argajun being a well-rounded user of fire, lightning, wind, and ice-based magic. These are just a few of the common monster entities in the region, with many others like the giant sand crab, water wolves, and more to be discussed. If you want to learn more information about the wildlife and biology of some of these creatures, let me know in the comments section, and I might just make a video in the near future. In the region's earliest stages of advanced civilization, technology followed a waterpunk, or hydropunk, type of philosophy, introduced by the Novo and enhanced with magic thanks to caste scholars. For the use of hydropower and magic, cities were powered in ways that coexisted almost perfectly with nature through the renewable power of water. In time, Moana and Aquas would adopt a more industrialized aspect to its society through the cultural and political intermingling with men later diminishing some of his traditional waterpunk themes to the side. Relics of such technology are still utilized, albeit to a lesser extent in its thriving past, with ancient ruins left scattered about the region, telling a story of a different era from once before. For this final segment, I'm going to talk about the design inspiration for this environment, but also some of that for my world in general within the universe of Animus. And for those of you still listening, why don't you consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel? Your support goes a long way in helping to boost this content in the YouTube algorithm, and it means a lot to me. Back to the video. I needed to design an environment that complemented the themes of my world building project. Through my project, I created Animus as a world that's an allegory to the human soul. Because of this, it also contains many allegories to the human condition in my world's cultural histories, naming conventions, and its spiritual connection to higher powers. One example is how the use of magic in my world is an allegory to accessing a higher truth, as described in philosophical works by the like of Plato and Aristotle, but also derived from a religious sense in Judeo-Christian and Islamic themes. Thematically, my world's regions, like Moana and Aquas, have their designs influenced by magic and magic arts, each classified into elements directly inspired by Miyamoto Musashi's famous book, The Five Rings, and the philosophical meanings that they represent. In my universe, I took a few creative liberties with the elemental magic, specifically by adding two more common classes into the mix. And as mentioned earlier, since the design for Moana and Aquas is based on water magic, its themes are inspired by two things, tropical coastal visuals, and philosophical themes by Musashi's Book of Water and his text, The Five Rings. Those themes will be experienced by my adventure's main character in the book that I'm writing to my world-building project, but for this section, I'll only focus on visuals. Some pop culture inspirations came from the personal memories I have of video game environments I would call cozy or beach-like, in games like Sonic Adventure, Sonic Heroes, Spyro the Dragon, Jack and Dexter, and a lot more whose sense of immersion I try to emulate. I borrowed visual inspiration from the real-life natural landmarks and architecture along the Mediterranean, most specifically Greece, its columns, and its temples. However, changed in ways that option for original architectural designs like the tooth arches resemblant of forms in nature. In conclusion, that's all I've got for today's video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment to share your thoughts or questions about Animus and its many realms. To support content like this, you can back me on my Patreon and have your name featured in these end credits, along with a lot more when you become a paid member. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, cheers.